Welcome to video 7 in the series of introductory videos for SolidCAM. Today's topic is the drilling toolpath in the milling module. If you're looking for the drilling toolpath in the turning module, I'll refer you to video 19 of this series. So let's begin. So the drilling toolpath can be found either on the tab under SolidCAM Operations 2.5D Drilling or right clicking anywhere on any toolpath or on the operations folder, add milling operation, drilling. So drilling, the drilling toolpath can be used for any Z direction toolpath. So that is spot, drill, tap, ream, pretty much anything you wanna just go in the Z direction. And those can be defined by points. So let's go to new geometry to define our points. You could go in there and choose a actual point or a on a point cloud or anything you have that represents points. Or you can use the, the associativity inside of SolidCAM to choose the, the points by either circles, arcs, or faces. So let's see how that's done. So this top face here has four holes on it representing represented by four circles. If I just click on that face, I'll get those four circles, and that's my, my, uh, my drill geometry. Uh, but if I wanted to do pre-drilling, I can't actually choose these arcs unless I say include arcs. And then once I click on include arc, let me just jump out of here and do that again. But including arcs, we'll actually choose all the circles and all the arcs. So now I have all, this, all the internal circles and all the holes on that surface. But I might not use the same drill for all those holes and arcs. So let me jump out of here, jump back in. And we're actually gonna include arcs and any circles but we're gonna narrow this selection down even further by saying only choose the circles by a particular radius. I can hand type in there the radius of the circle or the arc, or I can use the geometry to help me out and I can just say, okay, this is my radius, an example of the radius that I'd like to select. So now I'm filtering by radius, including circles and arcs. If I click on that face, I now have only the internal arcs that have that radius, okay? And that is, my drilling geometry. If we take a look at that, we'll, we'll, we'll see though that it did a counterclockwise uh, progression, but for some reason it started at this point rather than that point. So let's go into edit geometry, scroll down to the bottom here, just click on that point there, and we're looking at point two. Let's see if I can grab that and move it down. And there we go. So I've reordered the points just by clicking and dragging. So now point one is on that side and it goes in that proper direction. So that's what we're looking for in terms of the geometry. The workflow on the side is always the same. We're just gonna go ahead and choose a drill. So I looked ahead and I found out that this would probably be the largest drill I can put in that corner. Levels are the same as all the other toolpaths. We're basically gonna choose a face to represent the upper level. And the drill depth is, again, just a lower level. We're gonna take it down to this plane right here. Now you can define your drill depths in three ways. Cut or tip, basically if you look on the left side here, it's gonna take the drill right down to the cut or tip to that drill depth. But if this was the bottom of a pocket and it's just a clearance hole, and I wanna make sure that I actually bury the, the, the nose of the drill, bury the cone of the drill inside that floor to leave full clearance. Well, I can switch this to full diameter, meaning that it'll take the drill down to that depth and then poke a little further through just to bury the tip. And then that way it'll stop right at the beginning of the actual diameter of the drill. Even further is a third depth type that you can use for spot drilling and such, where I can basically say a diameter value that I'd like to stop at. So with a spot drill, you usually have a cone and a diameter that's much larger than the actual hole. You'd like to leave behind, say a countersink or something like that. What we can do here is I can say either, again, hand type the diameter or click on diameter value and then come over to the hole, click the top edge of my countersink and then collect the radius of that countersink. And now it'll actually drill deeper into the part to leave behind um, uh, a cone that has that as the major diameter or a countersink with that as the, uh, the top edge, okay? In this case, we're just doing pre-drilling, so I'm just gonna put it back to cutter tip. And lastly, in technology, the technology screen for a drilling operation is a slightly different than the other operations you've seen so far in these videos. 
Um, technology really just consists of how you'd like to sort your various tools, your various uh, drill points. The default is the one we just selected. It just basically does any kind of uh, counterclockwise, clockwise, whichever way you've set it. You can set it to find the points by shortest distance, or if you click on advanced, you can actually click on this browse button and then find the various default styles. So either zigzagging back and forth, shorter distance, if there was a circular nature to it, you can click on circular and find those sorting options as well. But I'm just going to go with the default. And then lastly on this page is the drill cycle type. Again, this is a tool path that you can use for spot drill, drill, tap, and ream. And the drill cycles you can find under there. So you've got your GD1, GD2, GD3, everything that's available from this post. In this case, we're doing drilling, so I'm just going to do a GD3. Once I choose any of the drill cycles that have any kind of additional parameters, you can go to data and then find those parameters here. So for instance here, um, say my post posts out a queue for my pec. Well, I can put my pec in here. Let's just do something that'll really show up when I generate the toolpath. Uh, we'll do 50,000. We have our retract option here. I can say no if I want to. And the step down is actually a representation of the pec in my solid verify or my host CAD. So I would say, let's make that the same value. Okay, so if I do a save and calculate on that, again, I chose a really shallow peck just so we can really look, take a look at that toolpath. And there we go. So again, drilling is just based off of point geometry, but the points can be found by arcs, circles, or faces. And you can filter them by the arcs or the, or the circles that are available for you in the, in the geometry. So that concludes the drilling toolpath for the milling module. If you have any further questions, you can always call us at the tech support line at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, or look forward to the uh, following videos for other toolpaths available from SolidCam. Thank you for watching.